So in Florida, uh, our crime rates at a 50-year low and our violent crime rates down 30 uh, percent since I've been governor. So, so we're handling it strong. Governor, actually, statistically speaking, the CDC says that the firearm mortality rate is actually higher under your administration than it was under your predecessor's administration. But I do want to move on to the campaign the, and just the what mortality your, rate? No, no. The firearm mortality rate. Well, I don't. But. I, was actually no, higher that, well, under first your of all, administration I mean, we, than your predecessors. We, that's according to the CDC. Let me because, move on to the campaign, Governor. Well, right, be, because of, well, because you had COVID and all that stuff. Excess mortality, is that what you're saying? That went up everywhere in the country uh, from 2020 on. No, Our excess mortality, mortality went up rate, less Governor, the fire than mortality. anybody. The firearm mortality rate. Let me move on, well, though, to I'll, the campaign, because I want to let you respond. Translation. I have no idea what firearm mortality rate means. It's questionable whether I even know what firearm means. I kind of think it means excess. So I can say I had firearm chicken tonight for dinner. That's for sure. You know, I yearn for the good old days when I just used to be able to show up to these platforms and just spew a bunch of talking points and, and information and, it wouldn't be till days later that people caught up to your lies. But Trump just ruined it for everybody. Now, after Trump, people come prepared to refute my lies. How am I supposed to just sit here and speak on these issues when you come prepared to refute my lies? I, I got absolutely nothing to say. It's a lot of uhs and ums. I will, I will tell you this, though. COVID, though. COVID, because of COVID, all right, a lot of these gun stores were short staffed. Okay. It was it was a lot of a lot of no calls, no shows at these gun shops and these gun stores all over Florida. And so security wasn't what it should have been. Okay. So because of COVID, of course, naturally there's gonna be more gun violence or firearm mortality, as you call it, or as I call it, excess mortality. I still don't know what that means. Well, let me ask you about some of the statements that you have made recently about those protesters. This week, you called for the banning of pro-Palestinian groups from Florida State Colleges. Your Republican challenger, Vivek Ramaswamy, says that violates the First Amendment rights of these students. He writes, quote, it's a shameful political ploy. It's unconstitutional. It's utter hypocrisy for someone who railed against left-wing cancel culture. What is your response to Mr. Ramaswamy? This is not cancel culture. Uh, this group, they themselves said in the aftermath of the Hamas attack that they don't just stand in solidarity, that they are part uh, of this Hamas movement. And so, yeah, you have a right to go out and demonstrate, but you can't provide material support to terrorism. They've linked themselves to Hamas. And so we absolutely decertified them. Uh, they should not get one red cent of taxpayer dollars. Uh, and we also have strong laws in Florida against fundraising for groups like Hamas. And we are enforcing those vigorously. It's not a First Amendment issue. That's a material support to terrorism issue. Yeah, just to be clear, you're citing the Florida law that says one cannot give material aid or resources to a terrorist organization. Do you have any support that they're actually doing that? Their own words are saying they're part of this organization, that they don't just stand in solidarity, that they don't just support what they did, but that this is their movement, too. So once you hit your wagon to a group like Hamas, uh, that takes you out of the realm uh, of normal activity. And that's something that, that we're going to take action against. So we believe we're totally justified within the law. Um, and I think things like this have been litigated time and again. Translation. It's not cancel culture if I'm the one who's doing the canceling. And when I say it's been litigated time and again, of course, I mean, since I've been in office, because certainly these weren't issues that were apparent before I'd been in office because nobody dared to try and prosecute people with no evidence whatsoever. You ask me what evidence I have. You know what? Well, thankfully, I've made it so I don't need any evidence. I determine what the evidence is and what I'll accept and what I won't accept. And next thing you're going to tell me that, oh, well, you know, there's lots of different people who feel lots of different ways and this whole thing is nuanced and whatnot. No, 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 no. I'm going to self-select the worst offender and I'm going to speak 
as if everybody is that worse offender. That is why I just speak as they, you know, <laughs> they don't they don't feel any different ways about this kind of stuff. Next thing you're going to tell me is the Middle East is complicated and nuanced. That's crazy. You can't conduct yourself in terms of mental illness. Shouldn't there be a law in this case? Officials in Maine are saying a red flag law could have made a difference. It would have empowered authorities to raise that red light to gun sellers all across the state and say this is someone who should not be able to own a gun that that final line of defense never kicked in because it didn't exist governor well no when you do background checks if somebody has a criminal conviction for example that goes into the system when the they Maine run doesn't a background, have strong check, background that is what check. they're checking again. Maine doesn't have strong background checks no are you arguing for it, that it's no every Every federal, every federal, there, uh, this is a fe federal firearm licenses. When you have to do, you everyone has to go through where they where they scrub this. So the question is, is what are you putting into the system? If somebody has a mental health involuntary commitment, then that can simply be put into the existing mm -hmm. system. You don't need additional uh, things. And here's the problem I have with with some of the proposals that have been done, and particularly in some of the more blue states, is that will be weaponized uh, against people that the government doesn't like. I mean, you have a situation where someone can just make an anonymous call into uh, a police station, let's say, say, so, say something bad about someone. But that and anonymous then they come call could have take, helped in this firearms. moment. Could it not have, Governor? Could an anonymous call have helped in this moment to block this shooter from getting a gun and going into these establishments and shooting up 18 of his fellow citizens? And he could have had that involuntary commitment just put into the normal system. That is something that, that would have been able to, to pop on the on a background check to then how say can you that people should just be able to find, call. Governor, how can you commit someone you can't find? When you have an involuntary commitment, uh, that triggers uh, 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 things to go into a background check system. So, so that should have been enough if those, if that information was put into it. So that's what I would do. I would focus on on those individuals who've actually gone and either been involuntary committed, been adjudicated uh, to be meant to be mentally ill. That that's really. How do you commit somebody that you can't find? We commit people we can't find all the time in Florida. We commit people that don't even exist. You don't even know the limits of our power here in Florida. And expecting me to know what the laws are in Maine when the crime happened in Maine is just is just silly. You know, like who who amongst us knows? what the laws are in Maine that are running for president. Now, it sounds like I am in favor of strong background checks. I understand that a lot of what I said was that stronger background checks, if they had better information, could have prevented tragedies like, like what we have seen here recently in this country. But I do want to say that I am, in fact, against um, strong background checks, despite uh, the the logic and the rationale that I laid out myself and why that makes so much sense and why that could have prevented so much tragedy. It's just, it's a terrible thing. And, uh, and I will never, I will never be in, because it can be weaponized. It, it, it can be weaponized. Next thing you know, you know, people are, 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 are calling in uh, involuntary commitments. And next thing you know, that person can't own a gun. And let me tell you, the only person who should have the power to do that is the governor and hopefully eventually the president.